As the days continue to get darker, and the truth becomes more hidden than ever before, it is important to revisit the basics and foundations of the truth. As each day passes, it feels like the war against Yah is increasing dramatically. More and more people speak about God, while at the same time discussing qualities about Him that don't match with biblical standards. There is an obvious disconnect in understanding the good news and what the will of Yah is for our lives and this world. We can discuss the false politics and economic news. We can discuss world conflicts and the decline of morality in our social structures. And all those things are important when trying to fully digest what is going on in this world or trying to wake up from lies that we have been led to believe in. But there is one truth that needs to be highlighted and a more heavy emphasis placed upon. This world needs to understand Yah and what his purpose and will is for our lives. This world needs to understand the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of ancient Israel. He needs to be understood according to the word and not according to people's interpretations that allow him to fit more comfortably in the box that they want him to fit in. Like for instance, one of the main things people love to say today is, God is love. He is a God of love. And yes, that is absolutely true. But the truth is that while he is love, people don't actually want to accept what he has done for us in love. They don't want to accept his love. When people use God as love, they are often saying this to justify their view that he will not judge them for their wrongs or sins. Yes, God is love, but he is also a God of wrath and judgment that will judge this earth. He loves us all and wishes that none of us would perish. But we have to receive him for who he is, not what we want him to be. As our creator, he makes the rules and it is highly offensive to fit him into our image that we have made today, rather than shift ourselves to his image in which he has always been. The fact is that people just don't understand him today. There is such a lack of understanding in the word that people just don't understand the most high and what his will is for us and this world. There is a lack of understanding around the true message of Messiah. They don't understand his purpose and why he is absolutely important in our lives. I have made a lot of videos about current events and what is going on in this world. I am right now working on an important video that is breaking down a major falsehood and false leader in our society. But I cannot continue to speak on these things while not ensuring that there is a strong understanding of the purpose of Yahusha the Messiah, transliterated to Jesus the Christ in English. If you don't understand why I use his Hebrew name, watch this video for a better understanding. But I cannot continue to speak on what is going on in this world while not ensuring that the purpose of Yahusha is known and understood without question. Now, I've covered and gone over this in a video a few years back, but it does need to be revisited so that during these times, there is a clear message about the will of Yah and his leading and direction for our lives. We are going back to the beginning to understand the will of the Most High. I want you to understand why you must submit to the God of Israel and make his will your priority. Or if you don't understand fully why you should believe in the Messiah of the Bible, let me break it down to you now. This is very important. Let's begin. You see, today, because we are fast approaching the time where Satan will be worshipped by the world, many people truly believe that they are worshipping the God of Israel, our true creator. But the hard truth is that they are actually worshipping Satan, a rebellious created being. And because Satan is the author of confusion, many people just do not understand the faith. I mean, we see the fake churches, the false pastors, the false proclaimers of the gospel, the false Christian entertainers, the false doctrines, the false Bibles, the false denominations. And for many, all that they can see is confusion and falseness. And so when the truth is something that is masqueraded and hidden from us because of false gatekeepers used to draw us away from our belief and relationship with our father, it is easy to believe it's either all fake or no one has the truth. You should just focus on being a good person and everything else will fall in place. But that is not the truth. There is a one world religion that is coming that is preaching a doctrine of acceptance and tolerance of all, 
just as long as you are not accepting and are intolerant to the doctrine of the one true God, Yahuwah. I made a series called A History of Religion that will walk you through paganism, then on to understand the God of Israel, then understanding the Messiah whom he prophesied of, and then we walk through his life, death, resurrection, and then the beginning of the church, and then the beginning of the lies from Constantine and Roman Catholicism to Islam and Jehovah Witnesses. If you have not watched that series, I recommend that you do. And if you have, maybe it would be a good time to watch it again, just so you can keep his word fresh in your mind. But that series is very in-depth. I would like to provide you with a ground level basic understanding. To gain this understanding, we need to start at the beginning. Now to be clear, this is a very condensed explanation. If you have other questions, I hopefully have made a video covering the subject. And I recommend that you go through my Bible studies playlist to gain more in-depth understanding. But for our starting point, we'll start here. We start at creation. You can find this in the first three chapters of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 through 3. This understanding does not include the Big Bang Theory, evolution, monkeys turning into men or dinosaurs. This is a biblical understanding. But we start with Yah creating the heavens and the earth all living things, and of course, man and women. He created all. Genesis directly handles how our relationship started with Yah. Adam and Eve were in a pure union with our creator. In the garden, our father walked amongst them, as Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 said. And they heard the sound of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah Elohim among the trees of the garden. Now this is where the problem started. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, Yah told Adam, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And this is an important point to understand. It's very important. So let's first understand that Adam did disobey Yah's command, and from the temptation from his wife, he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now when Yah confronted Adam on this, Adam did not immediately die. He was reprimanded severely, but the death that he was told of did not happen the way we would have thought. I mean, Genesis chapter 5 verse 5 says, Adam lived for 930 years. So what happened here? Did Yah's word come back void? Of course not. The account of Adam and Eve is important because it goes into the difference in our relationship with him and it's so important that you really understand this. When Adam and Eve were created, Yah started mankind living in communion with him. We knew him intimately. Adam had direct access to him. But when he sinned, he received a penalty of death. But it was not a physical death. It was a spiritual death, a death in which mankind was no longer in direct communion with our Creator. We were no longer able to be walking in a personal relationship with Him. We did not have direct access to Him. And this was always Satan's goal. He desired to corrupt Yah's creation. He desired to take away mankind's union with Yahuwah and bring us under His Satanic rule. He wants to be like the Most High. I explained this in depth in part 5 of the History of Religion series. You should watch it. Now, after Adam's disobedience, Yahuwah gives the first prophecy of the Bible to Satan in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And this is the whole setup of the world that we are currently in. This prophecy is extremely important to understand and place in your understanding when shifting your mind into a biblical mindset. Satan has a seed that has enmity. Enmity is the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. Satan has a child or offspring that is actively hostile to Eve's child. And in the end, Satan will bruise Eve's child's heel, but Eve's child will bruise Satan's child's head. I hope you're able to catch that. There is a worldwide spiritual conflict with mankind that is the seed of Eve. 
and a satanic bloodline that has lived on this earth as children of Satan. This prophecy can never be overlooked because it is the prophecy that the world is moving towards fulfillment of. And this prophecy is actually the solution to the problem of our disconnection with Yah. But we will understand that in more detail later. So let's continue. This is the starting point on the timeline. Creation. We will describe it as man living in direct communion and relationship with our creator. The next point on the timeline will be the temptation into sin of man. Then the next point is the death of man. But again, make sure you understand, our death is our disconnection from Yah. We are no longer in a direct relationship with him. Then the next point is the prophecy of the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Now listen, to understand more about the story of creation, you can go to my video called Born in Sin, where I speak about this a little more in depth. Now, after this, Adam and Eve were sent out of the garden and man began to multiply on the earth. According to Genesis chapter 6 and the book of Jubilees, the fallen angels began to take wives of the daughters of men and have children with them. And from this, the world grew in wickedness. But Noah found favor and grace in the eyes of Yah. His bloodline was not mixed with the DNA of the fallen angels. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 says that he was perfect in his generations. And long story short, Yah saved Noah and his family when he flooded the earth in judgment and destroyed all living things that were not in the ark with Noah and his family. After the flood, the nations of the world started from Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. So on this point on the timeline, we show that the nations of the earth stem from the three sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now for those that have a hard time understanding this, if you read your Bible and review the children of Shem, Ham, and Japheth found in Genesis chapter 10, you can trace their children with the different migrant tribes of the ancient world. This research provides more definitive proof on the validity of the Bible. I go into this topic more in depth in the video, The History of Racism and Nations. Now, in understanding this on this biblical timeline, you must remember and recognize that at this point in time, all of man is still on the same line. Mankind as a whole are still separate from Yah, our creator. Now, as time progresses, yes, you will find that Yah dealt with individuals he chose, but it was not by a personal choice of that individual. What I'm saying is that a person could not just say, okay, I'm about to have a personal relationship with the Most High because I believe in Him. And that's what I want right now. Please understand, this was not able to be at this point. And so when you look at this line on this timeline, understand this is why everyone is on the same line. Now, as history develops, the world empires that we all know of started to form. The first world empire starts from Nimrod and his mother slash wife, Semiramis. From this first world empire is where the pagan religions of the world stem from. The multi-god belief in Father God, Mother God, and Son of God started in Mesopotamia, and this polytheistic belief goes throughout the rest of the world empires. This is what is spoken about and explained in the first video of the History of Religion series. There's so many people that don't understand what the word pagan and paganism actually means. It is really important to understand this because it is a big source of confusion that we have found in this religious world. Paganism is the polytheistic multi-god belief in the three god structure of father god, mother god, son of god. The biblical belief is completely different because there is no worship of the mother god. There is no worship of a mother goddess. We do not worship Mary as mother god. But this is a different subject. Moving on through the world empires, we move on to Egypt, then Babylon, then Persia, then Greece, then Rome. Again, it is important to understand this, so I will say it again. In this polytheistic belief, this is where you will find the confusion that we are all plagued with today. This is where the misunderstanding comes that the Jesus of the Bible is the same as the Tammuz of Mesopotamia, the Horus of Egypt, or the Apollo of Greece. This is a huge understanding that needs to be gathered, that most churches seem to just skip right over.
but it cannot be ignored. But let's get back to the timeline. We will label this point as the first Babylon and the beginning of paganism and satanic worship. Now again, remember, all of man are still at this time moving together in this timeline because there is separation from Yah. I will keep repeating this because this point is so important. Now Nimrod and the empire of Egypt all stem from the bloodline of Ham, and the empires of Greece and Rome stem from the bloodline of Japheth. Again, like I said, I explained this in the History of Racism in Nations video. But from the bloodline of Shem, we are introduced to Abraham. Abraham was proven faithful to Yah and is given a covenant with Yahuwah. Part of that covenant we find in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. It says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. You see, through Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And this is a direct prophecy of Yahusha the Messiah who will bless the whole world. You see, many people today who want to say that Yahusha is only for them love to ignore this prophecy. But this covenant was made with Abraham so the world can be blessed. And Yah is still working to fulfill his prophecy made in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. So in this part of the timeline, we will label this as the covenant made with Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. Yahuwah used him and his line to bless all the families of the earth. Now the covenant goes through Abraham's youngest son, Isaac, and then it goes to Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons and Yah then renames Jacob Israel in Genesis chapter 32. The 12 sons of Israel are made separate tribes and from the blessing of one of the brothers, Joseph, they move to Egypt, grow in number, and then are enslaved. On the timeline, we will reference this as the establishment of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, after Israel is established and then enslaved, Yah uses Moses to free the tribes of Israel from slavery in Egypt and shows his power to the world for the first time, since he confused the languages at Babel. This was at the time of Passover. Passover is a great and prophetic time in the history of the earth, where Yah passed over the children of Israel who put the blood of a slain lamb over their doorpost and killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt he executed judgment. The blood of the lamb was a sign that he will pass over them and the plague shall not be on Israel when he struck Egypt. And this day of Passover should be remembered forever. This is found in Exodus chapter 12. We'll mark this on the timeline as the Passover. Now, after the Passover, Yah frees Israel from bondage in Egypt. He then promises to establish them as his chosen people and keep the covenant that he made with their forefather, Abraham. It is at this time where he gives them his laws and statutes and which we know today as the Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses, or the Torah. This is all spoken about in part two of the History of Religious series. In regards to the law, they were required to keep this law, and he will bless them abundantly. Now, if they did not keep it, they would be cursed. This is found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. You should read this chapter. It's very important. I have made a video about this as well. Now, in reading the Bible, from about Exodus chapter 20, then Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, you will find complete details on the law of Moses that was required by Israel to follow. And from this law, we now know what sin is. It is a transgression of the Torah. We will mark this on the timeline, but we need to make a change. You see, before this point, man was all together, walking separate from Yahuwah. But when Yahuwah reestablished his covenant with Israel after he freed them from Egypt and gave them his law they were now in a covenant with our creator they were the only nation on earth to worship one God the rest of the known world and the empires that came after in the ancient world all worshipped many gods they were all polytheistic Israel was the only nation to worship one God and now they are separated on this timeline now, they are still separate from Yah 
in regards to the spiritual death stemming from Adam, but they were Yah's chosen people. Chosen because they were used to carry out the covenant that Yahuwah established with Abraham and chosen to make the one true God of the world known to all nations. He chose a very small nation and made them victorious over many large opponents like Egypt and those who occupied the land that they were promised. So in this timeline, we will draw out another line from this mark and mark this as the establishment of Israel. Now, the Old Testament is filled with their history. You must read it. It's pretty much an extraordinary history book of the children of Israel. There is history, doctrine, and prophecy all combined. If you watch parts 3 through 12 of the History of Religion series, this history will be explained more in depth. This history should never be ignored, but unfortunately it is. And this is a great reason why so many people just don't have an understanding of what the scriptures say. But let's get back to the timeline. These two lines will move together. We have the Gentile nations, which is everyone except Israel. And then we have Israel. Their timelines will move together at the same time, but they are still separate from Yah. Yah is working through Israel, establishing his covenant to bless the whole world. Now, there's a lot of history that happens with Israel, but for time purposes, I will not go over all that in this video. At this point, we will go over the most important understanding that you need to know. And in identifying it, we will label this point in the timeline only on the timeline of Israel. This is the birth of the promised Messiah, our Redeemer, Yahushua HaMashiach. And this is where we see the covenant of Abraham fulfilled. This is something that must be understood in its entirety. And this video cannot give it the full attention needed. You must read the Gospels on your own. That's the book of John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I also go over this in depth from parts 13 to 43 in the history of religion. In those videos, the full gospel will be presented to you. But listen, you must understand Yahushua's words and his commands. But in the end, he died, and three days later, he is resurrected. And from this, the covenant made with Abraham is completed, and we can now bring the two timelines back together, because now all of mankind is now able to take part of the covenant with Yah. So let's bring the two timelines together and mark it as Abrahamic covenant fulfilled. Now, I hope that you're able to follow this so far. Now that the Abrahamic covenant is fulfilled, there is now another separation. Now, let me be clear that just because I brought Israel back into the timeline does not mean that Yah is done with Israel. He still has them reserved for himself. And as we see in the book of Revelation, he seals 144,000 of them. 12,000 from each tribe, excluding Dan. But the timeline is being brought back together again because now all men are able to be blessed by the sacrifice of Yahusha and his conquering of death and sin. And now there is a major separation. There is the world and there is the assembly, the followers of the way, the church. And these timelines are running parallel to each other. As time goes on, the church desires to bring more of the world in on their timeline to be saved. And the world, which is run by Satan, is trying to get the church to join on his to help usher in the worship of the beast. Now, before I bring this all into these modern days, let's bring some clarity here. Now, remember, the beginning of mankind's creation, we were made to be in union with Yah. But because of Adam's sin, we had a spiritual death. We were no longer in union with Yahuwah. After Yahusha, this all has changed, and this is why you must believe in him and surrender. This is completely a wonderful thing. So let me take a few minutes to try and break it down. When Yahusha was on the earth, he said this in John chapter 3, verse 3. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. So, of course, we must be born again. But it's not our physical lives. We're not going to be reborn physically. We're not going back into our mother's wombs to be reborn. No. This is a spiritual thing. Our spirits are reborn. Remember, because of Adam, we are spiritually dead. Not us physically, again, but spiritually. 
But now because of Yahusha, we are able to be born again and receive eternal life. Verse 15 of John chapter 3 says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So what is eternal life? Yahusha tells us in John chapter 17 verses 1 through 3, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true Elohim, and Yahushua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. Wow. So understand, eternal life is the opposite of the death that we received from Adam. Because of Adam's sin, we are spiritually dead and not able to come into union with our Creator. But by the blood of Yahushua, He has now given us a way to come back into union with Yahuwah. You should read Romans chapter 5 that explains this very well. Let's read it in verse 12. It says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Then verses 18 and 19 then says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Hallelujah. Like I said, eternal life is the opposite of the death Adam received and passed on to us all. Through his death, we were not in union with our creator because we all come from Adam. But through Yahusha, the son of man, the last Adam, we are now able to be born again and have life. Our spirits are reborn and we are now able to know our creator. We are able to be in union with him. This is a free, awesome gift, and we are given this when we believe and are baptized. Now, how does this union take place? This is another part that is not really understood well. When Israel was in their history before Yahushua, they heard from Yahuwah through prophets that spoke through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. He was in the midst of Israel, but he was not given freely to them individually. He did not dwell with them individually. Before Yahushua died and resurrected, he made promises about the Holy Spirit and said this in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Do you understand that? The Holy Spirit is our helper that brings us our union with our Father. He dwells in us when we are born again, and that's what gives us our eternal life. And that's what makes us part of the assembly. We literally are in union with our Creator and can now have Him guide us directly. I mean, when you actually understand it, it is so wonderful. And we should all praise Him and be extremely thankful for this. Because of Yahushua, we have a direct relationship with our Father that we do not need man to be an intermediary through. You don't need to go through man to gain access to our Father. You don't need to go through the Pope to have access to Yah. You don't need our pastor or church organization to be in union with Yah. You don't need these videos to be in union with Yah. You are able to have access to Him through belief in Yahushua and receiving the gift of His Spirit. You are now able to be in a personal relationship with Him, and through this relationship, when we place our trust in Him and surrender to His will, He provides all the goodness and content that our hearts desire. We are given a peace that passes all understanding. And so our belief in Yahushua allows us to be redeemed from the sin of Adam and gives us a union and a relationship with our Father in Heaven. We are able to be led by Him and walk with Him, and that is truly amazing. And this is why you must believe in Yahushua. I have a video that discusses the Holy Spirit if you want to gain more understanding on Him. In the end, on the day of final judgment, when all the world is judged, 
Our only way of redemption is being alive in Yahusha, being indwelled with his Holy Spirit and being born again. And there's no way of stressing the very importance of this. We can only come to the Father through Yahusha. Yahusha said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. But while we are alive here on earth, we should strive to be in union and fellowship with our Creator. And we should be thankful for the grace that He has provided that even allows this to be possible. When we choose to ignore this and take this grace for granted, it literally is the worst mistake that we could ever make. But that's the mistake the devil wants us to make. He wants us to take this gift for granted and to abuse the grace Yah has granted us and stay distracted from Yah's will. So why wouldn't we want to be in union with our Creator? Why is this something that so many reject? I mean, I don't imagine that the majority of people today knowingly have said they do not want a connection and union with our Creator, at least knowingly. But there's more important points to understand in this world. So let's get back to the timeline. As we move in the timeline, and we have the church and the world moving parallel to each other, you have massive points in history where the devil jumps in and adds confusion. We see it with Constantine and the start of the Roman Catholic Church, which is just a twist of the ancient pagan mystery religions while adding a repackaged Jesus in that adds confusion. We see wars and control that all stem from the Roman Catholic Church conquering the world in the name of God. Only it's not truly in the name of Yahuwah, but of Lucifer. We then have the rise of Islam, another attempt by Satan to create a religion tied into one God by imitating and reinterpreting the beliefs of the Jews who fled Israel at the Roman conquest in 70 AD, just drawing more confusion. Then we have the Knights Templar starting holy wars in the name of Jesus for actually servants of Lucifer bowing to the Baphomet. We have the creation of the secret religion and secret society of Freemasonry who have been tasked with spreading the light of Lucifer to the world. We have the enslavement of the children of Judah and their captivity in the United States and the Caribbean, introducing them to a false, hollow understanding of the Most High. We have many atrocities done in the world, all done by people that confess a belief in the Jesus of the Bible. And when we jumble all that up and package it up today, we see people that as of consequence of being ignorant of the Bible and emotionally disconnected from the truth, some of them knowingly, but most of them unknowingly, rejecting the greatest gift they could ever be given. Satan is the author of confusion, and he has spread it masterfully, creating narratives that only he can fill the gap in for and introduce his seed to the world for worship. You must know and understand for yourself, away from what organized religion has spread, that you are able to be one with our Creator and be led by Him personally. You can have a wonderful relationship with Him that brings you love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You have someone you can always trust in and depend on. You don't need to be taken advantage by this wicked world system. You can be free from bondage. You can have power over the dark forces that seek to come against you. You can have power and you can be redeemed and forgiven. What Satan has tried to do, if we use this timeline again, is draw this line as close to him as possible and blur the lines. So now what we have is more like three lines. There is the church, there is the world, and there is a mixture of the two. Now, let me be clear. When I say the church, I am not talking about these organized religious structures. I'm not talking about these buildings. I'm not talking about all the hypocrites in the world. This is not what I mean when I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the assembly of the uh, believers in Yahusha all around the world that rely on his word and not by the traditions and followings of men. That's what I'm speaking of. And I want to be clear. Now, it's important to understand only one of these lines will be accepted by Yah and have the power and the peace and all those other fruits that I've mentioned earlier. But you may be deceived because of the middle line. Like I was just explaining, there is a false church that has grown like a weed that presents a mixture of righteousness with worldliness. And you must understand it all leads to either death without forgiveness of your sins 
or the worship of the Antichrist and the acceptance of his mark. Understand, there is no mixing Yah with this world. And though you are seeing a great deal of professing Christians that claim love for Jesus, but you recognize they are also hypocrites, you must clearly know and identify and understand that that does not represent the true faith. Do not be misled by these hypocrites. They are distractions from the truth. The truth is that the truth is not in them. And you should not try to identify the power of Yah through them. I hope you could really grasp that understanding. Do not be misled. So in wrapping all this up, what you have been walked through is the reason why we need Yahusha. When you hear that the wages of sin are death, now you know that this is not about a physical death, but worse, a spiritual death that has taken us out of fellowship with our Father. And while you're living here on this earth and you're in this spiritual death, you will never find true happiness, peace, and your purpose. And if you die while being in the spiritual death, you will be judged harshly and be sent to the lake of fire with the one who deceived you. Now, this is another important point to understand. When we engage in sin, we are bringing in separation from him. Believing in Yahushua the Messiah, the son of Elohim, is not just so that we go to heaven, though that is absolutely a hugely big deal. But it's also so that we can live out the purpose we were created for, which is to worship our creator and be in fellowship with him. When we live out the purpose we are created for, you can understand why we have all these wonderful gifts like love, joy, and peace that passes all understanding. Why we can go through tribulation and still have peace. I want you to understand why you need our Savior and why you should submit to Him. I want you to understand why He is so important to us and why the devil doesn't want you to understand this. The devil does not want us in a union with our Father. He wants us to worship Him because he wants to be like the Most High. So he is aggressively attacking this faith to draw confusion and mix himself into it so that in the future, we are worshiping him, thinking that we are worshiping the Most High. And we are almost at that climax where this will be a reality. The only way for you to be free from the bondage and the deception is for you to walk in union with our Father, to repent from your sins, be baptized in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach and surrender to the will of our master. Stop living a selfishly led life that will keep you separate from our creator. And in the end, you'll be cast into the lake of fire. Life is not about doing what you want. It's about doing what our father wants. And it's time that you make a decision to serve him today. It's not too late for you, but it does require sacrifice. Put away the old man or woman and become a new creation. Stop worrying about fulfilling your flesh and desiring to be led by his spirit. Learn more about him. Read his word. Talk with him in prayer. Gain more discernment by understanding more about him. Let him use you for what you were created for and live a wonderful life in fellowship with our creator, the most high, the one true God of Israel, Yahuwah. I sincerely desire this for you. And I hope that this video sparks a desire for you to learn more about him. Read your Bible. And for more of an in-depth understanding, please watch the videos that are listed in the description box. But understand, you must decide who you are going to serve. Will it be the God of this world, a created being? Or the God of all creation, the Most High, Yahuwah, who you can only come to through belief in Yahusha? Understand, you cannot serve both. You cannot serve both Yah and Satan. But listen, if you got this far in the video, you have been given clear reason and understanding why you must believe in Yahusha to become born again. The only question now is, what will you do about it? The choice is yours. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like it and share it with others. I hope this provides more clarity on this subject. Share this with whoever you think needs to hear it. If you have not already done so, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and watch the History of Religion series. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday.
Also, don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. I would sincerely like to thank all those who support this ministry. I am very grateful for your love and support. You truly make a difference in this ministry and assist this ministry greatly with putting out these messages every week. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.